The centenary celebration of the life and work of Alan Turing, 1912-1954, is coming in 2012. His famous test was first introduced in his paper Computing Machinery and Intelligence, 1950, which opens with the words, I propose to consider the question, can machines think? The Turing test has proven to be highly influential, becoming an essential concept in the philosophy of AI, but it has also been strongly criticized. What do you think of the Turing test? Should it be still considered as a useful tool of understanding human-machine interactions? In June uh, 2012, it will be the 100th anniversary of the birth of Alan Turing. Uh, and he certainly is one of the father figures of the field of artificial intelligence, still one of the pioneers, one of the great philosophers of the field. And of course, he came up with what was called Turing's imitation game, trying to get a machine to pretend to be a human or more human than a human is. Um, which has become known as the Turing test and uh, the, the standard has been set as to uh, whether a machine can pass the Turing test. Big question, lots of people say yes in five years time, ten years time. Some people though say well it's just a waste of time, it's nothing to do with artificial intelligence and so on. Uh, whereas others say it is an important test and so on. Um, I have to say, I think everybody is right uh, in different ways. Um, it is a very, very human-centric test. So in terms of artificial intelligence, what it's doing is looking at a particular aspect of human intelligence, which is conversational ability and so on, and seeing if a machine can fool a human interrogator, typically, um, th they don't know whether it's a machine or a human. But it is more human communication, which is certainly an important part of human intelligence. And if you're trying to ascertain whether this being has at least some element of human intelligence, then Turing was quite right, it is a good test. But it is a very human-centric test. So in terms of testing intelligence in general, um, then it's very questionable. What it means to the field of artificial intelligence in general, then it is very questionable because it's looking at a specific aspect. But if you were challenging another human to see if they are intelligent, the only way really you can do it is to talk to them, to communicate, to do stimulate them in some way, get some responses from them and make a decision on that evidence. And that's really what Turing was pointing at, doing the same sort of thing with a machine as you would do with a human. So I think, yes, it is a very, very important landmark in the field of human intelligence, artificial intelligence in terms of copying human intelligence. But at the same time, in terms of once a machine has passed it, will that be something major, something fantastic um, in terms of what machines will have and so on at that time? Probably it won't be such a, an important event in that, uh, in, in, in that aspect. I think one thing it does show us, though, in studying the Turing test uh, and its different aspects, like the Lerbner competition, which we have every year, is more about humans. Um, how humans can be fooled into thinking this is a machine, this is a human, why they're fooled, what sort of conversations are they led into to call, cause them to be fooled. This is very important now in terms of cyber crime. How is technology on the web, how is technology that is interactive fooling people into uh, either going along and uh, with, with a particular tenor and, and paying for something that they shouldn't or giving up information that they shouldn't uh, unduly, incorrectly, inappropriately and so on. So I think the Turing test and what it's about 
is very important as a test of cybercrime um, than anything else. So it's, it's definitely got a role to play in artificial intelligence, but perhaps not necessarily in exactly the way we thought it would have.